huffing, but the practice is so dangerous. Young kids are using it to get high, and they can do it right at home. It's so destructive. But first, they're sizzling, they're sexy, they're identical twins who know what they've got and flaunt it well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Barbie Twins! Gorgeous twins burst on the scene last year, and their careers have been rocketing ahead ever since. A year ago, a billboard went up in Hollywood that had drivers slamming on their brakes, pedestrians stopping dead in their tracks. It became the focal point of Sunset Strip. Now, Playboy took a look and signed the Barbie twins for a cover and layout for their September issue. It sold out. Landmark had a best-selling Barbie calendar in 1991 and 1992, and now they're back, hotter than ever because the Barbie twins are on the cover of the January issue of Playboy. Their 1993 calendar is breaking the record books. It's number one. And just a few days ago, they unveiled a second billboard on Sunset Strip at a Playboy, uh, at a, what the, it's called a Playboy-hosted barbecue. Catch it? Hollywood is bracing itself for a second round of gridlock from the Barbies. And here they are today. Some year, huh? Quite a year. Yeah, quite a year. <laughs> production and having yeah. us good. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you something? No. You've got... Go <laughs> See? No, you don't understand. Why? Don't Do you all door. look nervous. There's no reason to be... Oh. How can you no, be on billboards nervous. and millions see you in Playboy and you come in and you're kind of meek and nervous? And I don't know. What are you going to ask me and everything? No, that's false humility. Oh, okay. <laughs> there no, you go. You don't make us nervous at all. You sure? At all. No. In okay. the audience. We feel very Then can I ask you, dear, sweet, friends of mine who have been here before, why do you try to look like lumberjacks? <laughs> People kept saying you're dichotomy. wearing the same thing every time. Come so. on. Really? Is We're looking for you know what? Well, if we, we came on in a bikini, <laughs> yes? it would be insulting to women, Okay. I would think. Uh -huh. And you, th is, hey, and let's talk about that for a second. Uh, were you upset at the way some women reacted First of all, to that to the first billboard. billboard. I mean, no. they, I mean, I, mean, I heard that people were actually taking bows and arrows yeah. Yeah. and trying it to hit made the billboard. Us worldwide famous. It did make us worldwide famous, which I didn't know. When I saw it, of course, I cried. I didn't even want to go near there. No, but I think feminism is a very important issue. I don't believe in, um, you know, uh, destroying anything, but I do believe in speaking up. Uh, everyone do. has their I think people point. have a choice, yeah. and I, maybe I would be offended too if there was a billboard that I'd drive in, into. Playboy's different; it's inside a magazine, but that could be offensive yeah. if you're driving on a boulevard. I didn't think so. So you can understand uncensored. some women saying, hey, oh, yeah. "This really doesn't help us." Yeah. Yes, I've, I've been done offended the same too. thing that women have done to yeah. us. Really? No, we Absolutely. haven't done the pain oh, and no, all that, that, but we but have objected to things that were. <laughs> Okay, for everybody out there, and me too, even though we've known each other a little while, which is Shane and which is Sia, because I can never... I think... Well, if our this father is, can't even tell us about. This is Shane. No. That's good. That's a very good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign? That's a very good sign. Why? Why? Our career is over if you know it right away. <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, well, she has a bigger butt and breasts. You <laughs> fatter. How come we can't tell that? We're because wearing, because the photographers are good, and we try to camouflage, but and these pants are very tight. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a little bit, about pants being tight. Do uh, you think men take you seriously? No, but we don't take them seriously, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is something, I, I don't want to inquire too much about your love life, but we always see it. you together. <laughs> uh -huh. We're always, you live together? We're yeah. codependent. Yeah. But <laughs> not orgies. No, orgies. <laughs> no, I don't believe in incest. We're very, we're very close. We're each other's best friend. 
but and definitely we've Somehow. had relationships but there is a lot of healthiness and unhealthiness to our closeness and we're working on the unhealthiness it's called the codependency because as twins you try to establish your own identity and your own boundaries and it's pretty hard with twins growing up and sharing everything what does that mean you can't have a serious boyfriend separately do you both have to be in relationships at the same time no no but sometimes they get a little sick of both of us or they get jealous actually mm -hmm. of our closeness have you ever played tricks on them? Absolutely. We don't even have to. Sometimes <laughs> we know the fun. tricks we're yeah, talking right. about, don't we, everyone? You know, I'm going out with Shane, but Sia shows up tonight. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Or yeah. I'll, I'll be on the phone with her boyfriend, and then I'll say, oh, by the way, I'm Shane. I think you better speak to Sia, and they'll be so embarrassed. <laughs> That's now, cruel. It will is. you ever work separately? We have. Well, we our, most of our life, we've worked separately modeling, but now... It's taking off it's, like this. So. Yeah, it's taking off like this, and it would, I think, dilute why, our... Yeah. Why would... Why do you think this all came in the last two Yeah, years? we're still asking why, too. I'm trying <laughs> to analyze this from the very beginning. The Billboard gave us worldwide recognition, and it wasn't until the Playboy that we actually had lead parts in movies and television without even acting, knowing how to act. We can't act. Written for us, and people didn't care as a Barbie twin. Now there are other twins. We're not even dead yet. And I don't even understand that. There's calendars. other twins that are playing us, the Barbie twins, which is yeah. really flattering. And before we leave we you... We don't know why. You don't know why. Before Maybe because women buy our things... For dartboards. For dartboards. For dartboards. Dart <laughs> <laughs> we heard that there were they more were torn up Playboys <laughs> last issue than any other issue, so they yeah. probably had to keep buying it. <laughs> this is how big the Barbie twins have gotten. Who did you say was going to do a story on big? You? That's another word. Well, it was an innocent thing. Yeah. It wasn't a. It wasn't a. I'm kidding. Another fat joke. Okay. Okay. Uh, Who's gonna do National Geographic. Yeah, yeah. National Geographic. We uh, had at the barbecue. I don't think there was one television camera or a magazine that missed us. But I thought the best was National Geographic. See, they say that this uh, issue is going to be a collector's item because it's a double cover. First, first time, time ever, ever billboard. billboard. And, and the, the party press that we got. They, they talk it's together with the same words. Right. And she could only... <laughs> and here's the deal. This is why I asked that. Think about it. You've done Playboy. You're going to do National Geographic. I, know. I think this is... My, I saw my first nude scene in National <laughs> Geographic. So did I, I want you to know that. So did I. Thank you very much. The next time we see the Barbies in about a minute and a half or so, there is a dark side to keeping these hot bodies looking like they do. The Barbies admit it. They are bulimic. For the first time, they'll talk about it on national television. Special K waffles. Crisp, delicious, yet every bite fat free, cholesterol free, and just 80 calories per waffle. See how good fat free can be. Oh, no, you never let go. Nah. Special K waffles from Ego. Mm -hmm. Alka Seltzer Plus Nighttime. For relief without alcohol, hit the box, not the bottle. America, if you want chicken tonight simmer sauces from Ragu, please tell us. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Eight great flavors like chicken cacciatore. All you do is brown, simmer, and serve. So what do you say? I feel like chicken tonight. Hitting a mine at sea can be fatal. That's why for years our military has trusted a Wisconsin company to build the most efficient wooden mine sweepers in the world. Wood is quiet. Uh, it's non-magnetic. And that's one of the main concerns for any mine warfare ship. But soon all this will change. Even though wooden warships have provided great protection at sea, the military is ready to move on to newer designs. Find out why in a sweeping change. 
a straight to the point report tonight at 10. How long has it been since you were challenged, stimulated, and had fun too? Open U is a serious way to have fun for adults, no matter what their age is. Learn skills like sailing, rock climbing, that are fun and challenging. There are more than a thousand classes, seminars, and events for people like you. You can try dancing, earn a living without a job, or learn new computer skills, career ideas, or business management. Challenge yourself. Call Open U at 379-3846 for a free catalog today. Some of, our, uh, some of our audience members are wondering why National Geographic, and I was just saying, well, you're obviously part of the national landscape. I <laughs> now, when you yeah. get naked for photographers for a living, you really have to watch every bite. I mean, gain an ounce, and it shows. And while Playboy fans are pouring over the pictures of the fabulous Barbie twins this month in the magazine, these sexy bodies are secretly being destroyed from within. Unbelievably, the Barbie twins are obsessed with food. Do you really like food better than sex? You could see it in the Playboy. I mean, just in the couple no, of weeks that we were no. there. It's, it doesn't matter if it's sex or food. It's one obsession changing to another. It can, some people can get into sex. Some people could get into food. We decided that food was innocent. Therefore, it took over our life, and there was no sex. There was no, nothing else when you have an obsession. Well, then you can't ask... say that you like it more than sex. It's just no, an addictive Well, uh, let me ask behavior. you this, then. What happens when you start to eat and it shows. Okay. Well, I we think let it show in Playboy. You could see the difference. We started out thin in that resort eating. It I, was look, like I kind of gave a cursory glance. You yeah. could see 15 pounds through the, difference. Through the yeah, layout. There's 15 pounds I could not see there. any difference. Oh, oh yeah. Well, a I lot of it is the photography. And, you know, women can pick it up. For the far away shots, I would wear heels because that takes weight off oh, yeah. or certain positions and it was very difficult for me to suck in my stomach and <laughs> when as I got fatter I just said just do tight shots of my breast please <laughs> cut out the rest of the body and it was just can't nice tight anymore. shots but in the thinner I was the more I let them go away that was the beginning of the shoot yeah. <laughs> towards the end and how would you feel as you as you as you say I just God. you know I tell you okay starting from the beginning I we grew up in a dysfunctional family so um and grew up on the program so we kind of stayed away knowing how we were how our family situation was we stayed away from alcohol and drugs thank god because i think we'd go to our extremes in that um in a dysfunctional family it's very hard to find your boundaries your ego boundaries so we didn't never learned our boundaries during our terrible twos whatever so as we grew up we took something innocent you know that's not illegal or whatever and we became obsessed with it and weight was only the result of the disease the disease was the uh, insanity or the obsession of the food that took over my life right. it was a control issue what would be a, what would a day be like before we introduce our next guest what would your day be like uh, that you wanted to try to get rid of what you had eaten the day before right. or that night what would you do there's well, so many different forms of bulimia. Well, Give let me... It, well, oh, tell okay. me what you did. Okay, let me say yeah, this. First let's of all... Let's use the big word. Let's use was laxative. First, yeah, well, right. okay, yes, of course. Let me start from the beginning. Food would be like a... I would get drunk with it. It would be emotional um, tranquilizer. Yeah. Exactly. So once I did that, I felt good, but then I felt Guilty. really bad that I would be fat, especially if I had to work. And Mostly we'd exercise all To that death, long. and that's part Not of bulimia. Not thinking that was... In fact, people I thought that was would say, God, your you're too are... fat to be bulimic. Yeah. yeah. You know, thinking that that, that was meant anorexic. anorexic. But no, it was bulimic. And we'd <laughs> exercise for three to four hours or thinking fat. that was so healthy. And that was a form of bulimia. And then we found out accidentally about laxatives and throwing up. And I mean, the hell that we went through during that was just like we were going so to die. So you began to think that you could eat, then take the laxatives, let them go through you and exactly. then throw up. Exactly. It was like having an abortion. You but don't But so think that about we don't it. give any uh, other ideas to other women, I want to say it doesn't work. It tricks you because it dehydrates you and then your body gets addicted to it and you have to have it to you. Let you go through hell. You age, you, you just, you feel like you're going to just die. Who was after. taken to the hospital? She was. 
And it was, yeah, that was, and that's what... I was too it. embarrassed. I did not want to go. I OD'd on laxatives, and that is not it's a It's funny. They way. say I learned through growing up, they say an alcoholic is a person that's not just a drunk, but someone that's gotten drunk and had a bad experience and continued to drink. Well, after that, we said, never again, and we still continue. So that's when I knew I had a disease going on. Joan Mardell is the twins therapist. They have joined a 12-step program to control their bulimia. Now, we might think these girls look fabulous, Joan, I assume. Uh, are they sick right now, do you think? Well, it depends on what you mean by sick. Yeah, they're obsessed. Yes, they have a problem. Yes, they are uh, doing the best they can <clears throat> to recover from this. But uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I would characterize it as sick so much as addicted. This is addictive. So how do you go about it? I mean, is it a 12-step step program that we use for drugs, we use for alcohol? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the same thing with food. But the thing with food is, you see, it's a benign substance. The, when they were talking, the girls were talking about how they picked that because they felt like that would be less detrimental than alcohol or drugs. Wrong. It is not less detrimental. It's dynamite. Do you think that they're on the 12-step program right now? These two? I, I believe that these, uh, these girls are doing the best they can to recover. This is very hard, Maury. See, they're in how the can public you come, eye. Yeah. How do you come to New York all the attention that you're getting with the billboard in California, the big Playboy cover, and continue to follow a program like this, fess up. I mean, are you back on uh, throwing up See, a See, there's no use having a therapist, though, if I'm not going to be honest with her. And part of the sickness is living in secret. Yeah. That's why we're coming That's out. That's why also we decided to come out. If it can help just one woman, and also, they say in the program, Sickness is secrets, and I was leading a double life. People thought we were so perfect and so, and it got worse. And it and was worse so glamorous. Whatever. Well, but that's Horrible. the nature of the disease. It's exactly. looking good. It's looking right. good at any cost. But they have to look good today. That's They're right. Have they to do. Look good See, tonight. We, we They're going to right. have to look good tomorrow, John. That's we right. They are. So maybe they shouldn't even be here. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no. we I mean, should they be here? Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. They're wonderful. They're yeah. look. Hey, who? So who's perfect? We're going to pay her. You know, this is, anybody who's got an addiction knows that this is not just, well, I'm going to give this up and never do this again. You know, I mean, these girls are here to, to actually to share up their pain with people out there and uh, to do a service if they can. And I think that's a fine thing. I don't think they have to be perfect. I'm going to tell you something. The nature of this illness is that it's, you're in relapse part of the time. There's no, there's no quick fix for this. Because you deal with food three times a day. You bet. Unlike you, you alcohol have to or learn drugs. Where daily you can... progress, not perfection. Yeah, That's part the of the disease. The most amazing thing is, look, if we were dealing with alcoholics, I would feel strange having a drink while talking to you if I'm dealing with an alcoholic. I probably walked up to you with a donut this morning. <laughs> yeah. and, and you did. I did. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. The Barbie Gym. I'll repent. Ever consider how much water we use in cooking? Soup, coffee, juices? Because water is so important to good nutrition, it's good to know you're cooking with fresh Culligan drinking water. How about a cup of coffee with your Culligan man? Call this number and your Culligan man or woman will bring the coffee and some Culligan water for brewing. Over a cup of great coffee, you'll learn how Culligan can reduce up to 98% of the dissolved matter in tap water. Culligan's AquaClear was the first drinking water system to be certified by the National Sanitation Foundation for the reduction of these substances, plus sodium and chlorine. And now you can save. Buy or lease a Culligan drinking water system, and installation is just $10. For apartments and vacation homes, consider the space-saving convenience of Culligan bottled water. Yes, the greatest name in water is now on a bottle. For all your drinking water needs, trust the expert. Just say, Hey, Culligan man! Call your Culligan man now. I took diet pills. I lost 34 pounds. Six months later, the weight came back. That's when I decided to get off the diet roller coaster and get on a Nordic track. In fact, Nordic track is so easy to stick with that after five years, seven out of ten Nordic track owners still use their Nordic track skiers three times a week. It's been more than two years. The weight's still off, and I'm still on my Nordic track. 
You should give Nordic Track a try. Call for a free video and brochure. Take weight off and keep it off for good. Nordic Track introduces the weight loss guarantee. Research shows Nordic Track's total body workout burns more calories than exercisers that only work your legs. Hundreds of thousands of people have taken weight off and kept it off with Nordic Track. And we're so confident you'll lose weight too. We guarantee it. We'll guarantee that you'll lose at least 10 pounds in 60 days or your money back. Call now for a free video and brochure. Ask about our 60-day weight loss guarantee. Hello, I'm Michael Dixon for First Chiropractic. First Chiropractic is a local association of established doctors of the highest quality. Doctors who have undergone an extensive screening process and have joined together to provide you with the best possible chiropractic health care. When you call this local 800 number, you will automatically be connected to the First Chiropractic office nearest you. So call First Chiropractic at 1-800-75-FIRST. That's First Chiropractic, where putting you first keeps us first. We're talking to the Barbie twins, and uh, Joan is with us. Uh, Joan is their, th is her, their therapist. Do you feel calmer around her that she's here? Do you get the, because she's yeah, here with yeah. you, does that mean you're going to behave, well, I'll say behave, you're going to have better habits? Now, I have to say this. This is kind of true, and she kind of broke this. There was a, an addictive feeling to her because I changed my food obsession to her, and I felt always so good after, but she even we stopped that. Because I guess we're addictive personality here. Yeah. Okay. So questions from two young people here. Yes. What are you gonna do when you're older and you find wrinkles on your face? <laughs> well, you know, from the laxatives we had plenty. <laughs> so you know what? What I now I keep focused on is not obsessing even on my looks, weight, whatever. That my looks and my weight will be a byproduct of right living. And my mind will be the first, sanity and peace. You know, it's funny, Playboy, ironically, people that know us, know us as not being the type to take off our clothes. In a way, that was therapy. I know that sounds funny, because it was like getting rid of that obsession. Because I wouldn't have done it unless I thought that I was perfect. And we mm -hmm. were far from perfect. Now, a lot of people out there in the audience uh, at home might wonder, you know, why are young kids watching a segment with the Barbie twins and it's because of this because their teacher wanted them to see this and because of the subject that's yeah. coming up later on in the show so we've checked it all out don't question our sensitivity <laughs> here. Um, how old were you when you became bulimic how old were how you old was it? um well it depends what the day I never knew that I was bulimic I was always destructive I guess w and obsessed with my weight or actually I was skinny and then when I went through puberty we blimped out why do we I get the feeling that that you you have a bigger am i wrong you have more of a problem than she does do you no, no. in fact i think it's the opposite i'm learning from her right now <laughs> no. no you girls um, switch off yeah, yeah we, we switch do. off we it's switch so funny off. when someone says she she's doing moment. all the talking this morning i'm <laughs> sick of hearing her so i'm talking okay yeah. i do Sounds want to good. bring up a point though there is one picture that i'm sure they're going to show on the monitor and it's being merchandised as a poster and an oversized, one of the largest 16 by 24 postcards. Yes. And we're the story behind this now. picture is that no one wanted this picture because they said we were very fat. We, droopy we had breasts. droopy breasts, big hips, thick in the stomach. And they Which said, this true. will not sell. <laughs> and I said, you know what? We had the worst shots for our calendars, the worst photography, the worst makeup, and we made it number one. I said, I'm determined not to compare myself to a thin model and I'm determined to let people allow themselves to like me as I am. And that was a shot that I allowed myself not to be bulimic, to be what I was, to be the Barbie twin, whether it's fat in some people's word, whatever. I'm determined to sell that and make that number one. I was just wondering how, I was just wondering how you became bulimic. Did it come by naturally or subconsciously? Did you hear other actresses who yeah. have great shapes like Jane Fonda and Cher? Did you subconsciously sort of pick I up was, on that trend? You know, it's funny. We were so much into help, I couldn't understand that because we never did drugs. We were so fanatic in what we'd eat, everything. But I we thought that over-exercising was a part right. of the health. I thought when it hurt, you know, from doing five hours of the Stairmaster well, or something that was healthy. Also, when I saw myself fat, unlike girls that did drugs and they look so in and hip and beautiful, when I saw myself fat, I thought, what an ugly disease. What I do mean, you think of, what, do you think you're fat right this second? No. no. 
I mean, first of all, I know what to wear to hide this, and I dieted for this show. <laughs> <laughs> but correctly. No, correctly. Not dieted, where it's a 24 hours thing. Obviously, um, Playboy probably, you know, hindered this, this problem. Is it worth the money and the glamorization of... No, Playboy, no, Playboy. on the contrary. I, if, when we well, model... but wait a minute. Playboy didn't, but what you no, do no. did, you, I mean, the billboard, the, the fact that this, is, this, this is your livelihood, the calendar... Okay, sure. the billboard, we were 114 pounds and very bulimic. The but, first one. And the calendar. They were very bad pictures. And people, I just, I don't know why it was number one. But and yeah, and we Playboy, went through so much destruction to be This perfect. Playboy, we were 135. Even 140. At our some pictures. Which we, is heavy. But I'll tell you, model. it was cheating because we had a very good photographer. And he made us look good because we were fat. Chubby. Yeah. So are you less than the... Than yes, we oh, are yeah. less now. And is that okay, Joan? Um, the, the main thing we want to talk about here is the disease aspect of it. It is not the weight. The weight is only a result. Uh, the important thing is, how are they living? Are they in recovery or are they not in recovery? And what do you mean by, t tell me about recovery in terms of their habits. Okay, recovery is, you don't vomit, you don't use laxatives no matter what. You have to be willing to gain a little bit of weight. I think they've been willing to gain. I think that, you know, I mean, this is very hard. They have to go on some uh, show and, and uh, you know, they go to work in the morning and instead of putting on uh, a dirndl skirt and a long tunic because they overate last night, they go to work and put on a bikini and stand in hot lights in front of uh, strangers. Uh, so it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. But yes, they are, um, my view of this is if they are not using laxatives, they are not vomiting, uh, actually, here's, here's... How can you be sure they're not? They tell me. Here's the real secret of this. Is. Joan. I trust, th I trust them. Here's the it's real secret. It's not like secret. drugs, not like alcohol. I can smell no. alcohol. I can, you know, drugs you're going to have a physical reaction to. This. Maury, the thing about this is, if you don't do all that stuff, you get thinner, ultimately. This is a question of trading long-term health for short-term uh, uh, gratification. I health is thinness. I just wondered if bulimia requires therapy for the rest of your lives, or is there any medical treatment oh, that's... No. Uh... no, 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 no. Well, when we, at what point do you say, okay, they're a recovering bulimic, they can handle it by themselves? When they come to me and tell me that. Oh, when it's we just like it. So it's like most analysis. Well, this is an analysis. This is therapy. We talk about it, you know. Uh, this is... The, uh, any kind of addictive uh, therapy is extremely here and now. This is, this is about getting your life back because you can either have your life or you can have your addiction. Right. Now, and what do you think? They want their life. Do you feel like you're, you're living your life or are you still... I do. It's 24 hours a day. I feel kind of new. I feel like we, See, we can't wean ourselves off yet, but there will be a day. And I feel good about it. Sometimes I feel good and there are ups and downs. There are times holidays are very difficult. This is such a tough time That's the year. worst. Oh. But that's why we go out and we do things for the homeless. We put our minds to somewhere else. Because we make food for the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. I'll never forget this one time. I, my ride was late. I made all these sandwiches. I was a vegetarian then, and I made bologna sandwiches because it was, you know, not very expensive, and I made so many. And he was late, and I ate all of them. <laughs> I was so mad. I want to thank you. So, so was the homeless. Thank you. It kind of always cheers me up when you come. Oh, you are nice so nice. You. It was I thank us. you very much. Thank you. You are almost an American icon, or oh. maybe the plural of icon. <laughs> icon I. Icon I, or something like that. Thank you so much. Thank Good to you, see you. Lord. Joan, thank you very much. I think it's very important to, that these two people come here and talk about the pain instead of the play. Thanks so much. When we come back, there is a deadly new fad that is killing our kids. They sniff propane to get high.